Now let's multiply a mixed number by a whole number. So we have 2 and 3 quarters times 3. Now the way I like to do this is to look at the mixed number and first multiply the whole number part of the mixed number, so work out 2 times 3, then multiply the fraction part of the mixed number, so work out 3 quarters times 3, and then add up the answers. So if we look at the whole number first, 2 times 3 is 6, so then we can work out 3 quarters times 3 and add up our answers. But we need to be really careful here. When we multiply a fraction by a whole number, we only multiply the numerator and the denominator stays the same. We'll see why we have to do that in a moment. But 3 times 3 is 9 and the denominator stays the same, so we have 9 over 4. But that's an improper fraction. We have a numerator which is larger than the denominator. So we can't write 6 and 9 quarters as our answer because we can't have an improper fraction in a mixed number. We can't have a fraction where the numerator is larger than the denominator if we have a mixed number. But we can change 9 quarters to a mixed number. A fraction is really a division. So we can divide 9 by 4. That's 2 remainder 1 because 2 times 4 is 8, and then we need one more to get to 9. So notice the 1, the remainder, is written as the numerator, and the denominator stays the same. So 3 quarters times 3 is 2 and 1 quarter. So now, remember the last step was just to add up our answers. So we've multiplied 2 by 3, we've multiplied 3 quarters by 3, so we need to add 6 and 2 and a quarter. 6 plus 2 is 8, and the quarter stays the same, so our answer is 8 and 1 quarter. Now, let's try 2 and 1 quarter times 6. Remember, we can multiply the whole number part of the mixed number first, then multiply the fraction part, then add up our answers. So, 2 times 6 is 12, so we can work out 1 quarter times 6 and then add up our answers. Again, remember, when we're multiplying a fraction by a whole number, we only multiply the numerator and the denominator stays the same. So 1 times 6 is 6, the denominator stays at 4, but now we have 6 quarters. Again, we've got the same problem. We can't write 12 and 6 quarters as our answer because we can't have an improper fraction. We can't have a fraction where the numerator is larger than the denominator if we're writing our answer as a mixed number. But we can change 6 quarters back into a mixed number by dividing. 6 divided by 4 is 1 remainder 2. So the remainder 2 is our numerator. And that's because 1 times 4 is 4, and then we need 2 more to get to 6. The denominator stays the same, so we worked out that 2 times 6 is 12. 1 quarter times 6 is 1 and 2 quarters, so now we can add 12 and 1 and 2 quarters. 12 plus 1 is 13, the 2 quarters stays the same, so our answer is 13 and 2 quarters. But now, let's think about why this method works. Why we can split the mixed number up and multiply the whole number and then the fraction and then add up our answers. So let's take the first question, 2 and 3 quarters times 3. We worked out that 2 times 3 is 6, 3 quarters times 3 is 9 quarters, which is 2 and 1 quarter, and then we added 6 and 2 and 1 quarter to get our answer. But let's think about what multiplying a mixed number is really about. To show 2 and 3 quarters, we can show 2 whole bars and then 3 quarters of another one. We're multiplying by 3, so we can show 2 and 3 quarters 3 times. So how does that give us 8 and 1 quarter? Well, look at the whole numbers. We've got 6 whole fraction bars, so that's our 6. 
And then remember each of these sections is a quarter and all together we've got three, six, nine quarters. So that's our nine quarters. But look what we can do. We can regroup. We can regroup that nine quarters into two, two holes and one quarter. So that's why dividing the numerator by the denominator changes it back into a mixed number. So you can see now, what do we have all together? We have eight holes, six up here, and then two here, which matches the six and two we have here, and we have one quarter. So our answer is eight and one quarter. Now, let's try the other question we looked at. That was two and one quarter times six. So we did two times six to get 12, and we did one quarter times six to get one and two quarters, and then we added up our answers to get 13 and two quarters. But let's think about what this multiplication is really telling us. We have two and one quarter, so there's two holes and one quarter of another fraction bar, and this time we're multiplying by six, so we need to show two and one quarter six times. There we've got two and a quarter, one, two, three, four, five, six times. So you can see how our working out matches. We did two times six to get 12, and we have 12 full fraction bars here. Then we did a quarter times six to get six quarters. Remember, each of these parts is one quarter, and we have six of them, so we have six quarters. But remember, we divided 6 by 4, and that gave us 1 remainder 2, so 1 and 2 quarters. And you can see, if we regroup these fraction parts, we now have lots of empty bars which we can just ignore. But for this first bar, the whole bar is shaded, so we have an extra 1, an extra 1 whole, and we have 2 quarters of another. So altogether, we have 13 and 2 quarters. 13 because we have 12 here and 1 here, and we have our 2 quarters. Now notice, 2 quarters is the same as 1 half. If we keep the same amount of the fraction bar shaded, but just divide it into 2 pieces rather than 4, you can see that 2 quarters is the same as 1 half, so sometimes you can simplify your fraction. So we could have written 13 and 1 half instead of 13 and 2 quarters. But most of the time, you'll still get the mark if you leave the fraction unsimplified. Now, 1 and 1 third times 60. So we can follow the same steps. Do 1 times 60, do 1 third times 60, and then add up our answers. So 1 times 60 is, of course, 60. And with 1 third times 60, we have to remember to only multiply the numerator by 60. So 1 times 60 is 60. The denominator stays the same, so we have 60 thirds. Remember, this is an improper fraction, but we can change an improper fraction back into a mixed number by dividing. Now, 60 divided by 3 is 20. You might need to use... Uh, short division here, or you might be able to do it mentally. 6 divided by 3 is 2, 0 divided by 3 is 0. So we've worked out 1 times 60, we've worked out 1 third times 60, so we just add up our answers. And 60 plus 20 is 80, so that's our answer. So notice sometimes when you multiply a mixed number by a whole number, you still get a whole number as your answer. And we have that because 60 divided by 3 was exactly 20 with no remainder. Now 13 times 1 and a half. So 13 times 1 is 13. And we can work out 13 times a half or a half times 13. We remember the denominator stays the same and 1 times 13 is 13. So we have 13 halves, but we can change that back into a mixed number by dividing. 13 divided by 2 
is 6 remainder 1, because 6 times 2 is 12, and we need one more to get to 13. The denominator stays the same, so now we just add up our answers, and work out 13 plus 6 and a half. The half stays the same, 3 plus 6 is 9, 1 plus nothing is 1, so our answer is 19 and a half.